Hey everybody, this is Sam Kwok here. And this is Daniel. And we are the, the Kwok Brothers. Brothers. And today we're gonna talk about what to buy during the real estate dip. I know there's a lot of conversation going around as far as the housing market flipping. So we're gonna address specifically what to invest in. Uh, not necessarily buying to necessarily live there, but what do you buy during the real estate dip to take on a profit opportunity to invest and grow your portfolio. So. Daniel, what is the first one here? Yeah, so in terms of investing passively or you wanted to do it yourself because you yeah. have the money to do so, one of the things that I love right now as an opportunity, especially if you're looking to invest passively, is 55 plus older communities. Now, I'm not talking about nursing homes per se, yeah. but I'm talking about, you know, class A luxury apartment living with, you know, all the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. We're talking about saunas, gyms, pools, all the things that 55 yeah. and older community individuals are going to like. And yeah. here's why, right? I love that because if you look at the statistic, if you look at the baby boomers right now, mm -hmm. we haven't actually even hit the apex of what they're looking for. I believe right. there's a number, right? What was it by 2030, Sam? Yeah, 2030, approximately all baby boomers will be 65 years or older. Absolutely. Yes. So I think if you find like a REIT, private equity firm or, yeah. or a firm or a large company that's looking to develop or convert, mm -hmm. you know, 55 plus olders, and, and attract, especially in states like Florida, yeah. Arizona, Texas, where a lot of the, the baby boomer populations yeah. are moving to. I mean, we have stuff going up in Illinois and we're the number one state for losing baby right. boomers in our population. Yeah. Which, by the way, again, leads us to say that Sam and I's private equity firm, we will be developing. Right. That's, that's something in our plans as well, looking to develop a 55 plus older senior living community in the state of Florida. So yeah. if you're interested, obviously, click on the link in the description, get yep. our contact and email us. Yeah, so that being said, if you're in the Southern states, Florida, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, those are gonna be some hot, hot, hot areas. And Daniel alluded to some of the multifamily uh, type of assisted living facilities, but you can actually convert a single family or a two unit into assisted uh, living facility. In fact, we have a friend that has a single family, three bedroom, two bath type of a deal, and is generating over $10,000 of rental revenue every single month. So when you compare it, right, think about this, $10,000 revenue, average you know single family home cost not as you know that big it's a great ROI opportunity so even if you're not thinking about oh multifamily too little too big even with single family mm -hmm. I think there's a good opportunity there as well uh, the next thing number two yeah. is manufactured homes now this is different than tiny homes this is different than necessarily trailer parks but there is a new class of manufactured homes that is being developed. Uh, they look really nice. They actually don't look like manufactured at all. Uh, yeah. in fact, Do they compete with just regular new builds? Oh, absolutely. They they have you know luxury five star uh, type of amenities, granite counter uh, granite countertops, mm -hmm. vinyl, or even hardwood floors yeah. sometimes. And you know I love that actually as a compared to the yeah. tiny homes or the you know the what, what do you call those the 3D printed homes yes. right there's a lot of companies that are popping up right now. Yep. I don't like those but I do like the manufactured homes because if you look at the price of obviously lumber, if yep. you look at the price of crude oil, copper, all these very important ingredients that go into building a house. Mm -hmm. And then you also look at supply chains and how manufacturing right. supply chains are super messed up right now. It's going to be very difficult to make a case for cheap new build housing right. the next 5 years. Now, we know that the the price of a single family home is going to go down, mm -hmm. right? The median sales price for a single family house right now is at its apex. It's the highest it's right. ever been, according to Redfin, Realtor.com. Yep. The National Association of Realtors at 375000 for the median sales price. Mm -hmm. I see that going down, but I think if you find a way yeah. to cheaply manufacture homes without using lumber, without using those very expensive things right now that I believe yeah. will remain expensive the next three yeah. to five years, you can have a very good yield, very Absolutely. good margin. Yeah, and so a lot of times, again, this is a great solution for affordable housing issue right now. Prices are going up. A lot of people can't afford homes. This is going to be a phenomenal solution. And we'll talk about other ways that uh, other government laws and opportunities are coming up. So that's manufactured homes. I think there could be a good opportunity there as far as profit and, mm -hmm. and invest. All right, so for third thing, what do you got, Daniel? Yeah, so I know I bashed on this a little bit a moment ago, but yeah. I, I, the, t the concept of a tiny home, I don't believe it's very viable for a long-term solution of sure. the millennial, right? Okay. I, we think it's cool. It's great. It looks yeah. great on Instagram, pinchers, but you know, nobody, if, especially if we're working remotely, nobody wants to live in a 300 square foot house, right? Sure. Sorry. It just doesn't work. Right. Yeah. However, I love the tiny home concept in areas where it's very popular with vacation rentals, nightly yes. rentals like Airbnb, VRBO, HomeAway. I think those are absolute cash cows because if you think about vacation rentals and going mm -hmm. away, you want that Instagram experience. You right. want that Pinterest and, you know, ooh, look, look, taking pictures of where we are. And if you think about it too, something that's 300 square feet, 400 square feet, if you're mm -hmm. only really going there to sleep 
and kind of wake up and have breakfast, you don't need something gigantic. Right. You know? Especially if you if it's you and your partner, couple, right? Um, boyfriend and girlfriend, right? Um, it, this would be a phenomenal opportunity, especially in areas where it's um, considered camping, right? If you're in states like Montana, Washington, yeah. uh, parts of Idaho, uh, the Dakotas, it's a phenomenal opportunity to do tiny homes or Airbnb, VRBO, or nightly rental type of situations. Um, I, and some of these homes, tiny homes can yeah. go as low as $8,000. So the barrier to entry is very, very low. Uh, but I think the, the profit yeah. profit opportunity is going to be very, very high. And especially the next 12 to 24 months where you're going to start seeing the price of a home start to calm down a right. little bit. Uh, I think the cash flow opportunity in the tiny home to Airbnb model is going to be absolutely spectacular. Yeah. Because guess what? Travel it's, it's already back. People yep. are already traveling. But in terms of vaccinations getting more normalized, in terms of travel restrictions starting to be lifted a little bit more and yep. more, right? People are going to be at the apex of wanting to travel. Think yep. about all the money that people have saved yep. to be able to go on vacation, right? The, the, I'm right. talking about the family who, you know, hey, sorry, Billy, we weren't able to go to Disney World this year. But hey, we'll save that money right. with all the stimulus check coming in. And we're going to be able to go to Disneyland next year. Absolutely. We're going to be able to do that. So I would say tiny homes to Airbnb, great strategy for the next 12 to 24 months. So that was number three. Let's go and talk about number four, and that is converting short sales and foreclosure properties into multifamily. Now, last week, we talked about when the real estate dividends can happen. And one of the key variables being is that mortgage forbearance programs are ending. We're going to see eviction moratoriums ending. So we're going to see a lot of distressed inventories being back on the market again. Now, the unique opportunity here is that there's a law on the table right now, a bill, I should say, on the Senate called the Yimby Act, which is Yes in My Backyard Act. Now, this is more of a complex bill, and there's a lot of proposals, but one of the key proposals that Yimby Act addresses is allowing for more flexible zoning. So basically taking a land use that's for specifically for single family mm -hmm. and being able to convert it into multifamily. So imagine buying foreclosures and short sales on a single family, converting into duplex or three unit mm -hmm. or even four unit and renting the individual units out for even more profit, yeah. more rental. And it'll right. definitely help with the inventory and a lot of the affordable well, housing here's, issues. Here's, here's three major reasons why I love that idea. Because number yeah. one, if you think about buying something in foreclosure, if you're thinking about buying something on short sale, which yeah. ultimately the banks are going to want to do to increase their yeah. liquidity position. Uh, I love that because you're buying something pennies on the dollar. You know, and you might not buy 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar, but if you can buy a home 70, 60, 80% mm -hmm. compared to what it's worth right now because the yep. bank is looking to liquidate, great. That's fantastic. So you have a very easy, low cost barrier to entry. Number two, the reason why I like it is because you're converting the home from a comps perspective. Because remember, the way that we value a home is you look at the comparables right. in other houses similar to that property in that local area, and you're converting it to the valuation to income based right because remember in multifamily we generate right what the value of that in multifamily is based on how much income it produces right so a lot of times nine times out of ten when you're going from comp to income based the values tend to go up yeah so it's and, and this is gonna be great for states like uh florida yes. new york where there's a lot of misuse of land, right? There's a lot yeah. of land that could be used for multifamily, but are not being used because the laws, uh, it's incredibly hard to rezone it. You know, there's a lot of red tape. Maybe there's a lot of legal fees that are yeah. involved, right? Converting right. those. So, and what I love about that too yeah. is if you're the investor doing this and you're the one instigating it, managing it, yeah. your equity position goes up if your value goes up. And you're doing that in a market where values are slowly but surely going down mm -hmm. because the inventory is not going to stay this low forever. So yeah. if you have a market that's slowly going down and you're gaining the equity, you're right. keeping up with the market in terms of what you can hold on your own. Mm -hmm. Reason number three is the reason why I love this idea is because rents are not slowing down. No. Right. Rents are not slowing down at all. As a matter of fact, there's a major demand saying that rents in terms of th four units and lower single family rents are skyrocketing. Yep. Right. I mean, we're seeing rents in the 100, 200, 300 apartment complexes go up. We're seeing the rents in the one to four unit residential units go up even higher. So yeah. I think if you can find a way to have a low cost of entry mm -hmm. with these single family homes, convert it to multifamily, right. rent out the rooms, whatever you want to do, right? Or separate the units through firewalls, whatever it may be. And I think if you get in right before the rents really increase, mm -hmm. I think that is a fantastic opportunity, whether you're passively investing or you're actively investing. So as you notice, we didn't blatantly say, hey, go invest in multifamily or go invest in single family residential. 
We're speaking about the application. Where are the demands? Where Where's the money going? And a lot of it has to do with affordable housing. A lot of it has to do with the oncoming millennials wanting to buy homes, but also baby boomers exiting uh, the, the, the working economy into assisted living facilities or uh, into certain types of living where it supports their needs. So Think about those things, right? Think about demand. Where is the money going? And I think that's the key when it comes to investing in the right uh, asset class, investing in the right opportunity as far as housing market and real estate goes. Yeah, and I will say, you know, when you're looking to actively invest, if you heard one of these ideas and you said, mm-hmm. well, I can do that, yep. well, be weary because it takes a lot of training. It takes a lot of practice. Absolutely. It takes a lot of knowledge and research to be able to do those things. Mm-hmm. So if you guys are interested in that, we actually wrote a book. Yep. Zero, to zero to 75, 75 units. units in one year where we outline how to get your team, all the information, the knowledge to be able to buy properties and do exactly what we're talking right. about. And you can find that information where, Sam? Yeah, down below in the link description. Yep, zero to 75 yep. units.com. So with that being said, did we miss anything? Go and comment down below. We'd love to hear you guys what your thoughts are. Also, did you want us to cover on exactly how to buy these asset classes? Let us know because we would love to make mm-hmm. more videos about how to buy these uh, specifically and what opportunities to look for. Uh, we can go into more detail. So uh, we always make videos depending on what you guys give us as feedback. So let us know down below. Yep. Let us know, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.